Try communicating without using metaphors. You'll quickly find it's impossible. Well, that might not be entirely true, but you'll find it incredibly boring and dehumanizing. Metaphors are not simply alternative literary means of communicating, but intrinsic to what it means to perceive reality. As George Lakoff says, new metaphors are capable of creating new understandings and therefore new realities. Metaphors jar us. They wake us up to something we've missed and never knew. Jesus does this masterfully as he illuminated to his disciples the reality of himself, the world, and the kingdom of God. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. Even some biblical images have transcended the pages of scripture and implanted themselves within broader culture as metaphor, like scapegoat, forbidden fruit, Jezebel. But our modern world has adopted a set of rather industrial metaphors built on productive and economic framing that has deeply informed not only how we view um, others, but even view ourselves and place in the world. I don't want to invest in that relationship. Spend your time wisely. I feel bankrupt. This way of thinking is no longer profitable. Our use of metaphors frames our lives, creating limits and boundaries to our anthropology. So today we want to explore the salient topic of metaphor and how it informs reality and the Christian life. We may even present a few new metaphors that open you up to new worlds and possibilities. Welcome to Lunch on the Way. I'm Joey Millington, joined as always by Jonathan and Graham. How are you guys doing? Good. I yeah, good. I feel... I feel smarter by just listening to that introduction. I know. You, that was really good, Joe. That was really good. <laughs> so we're going to talk about metaphors today. Mm. But before we get into that, uh, Jonathan, welcome back. Yeah, it's been yeah. a while. Where have you been? Oh, where have <laughs> I been? Hey, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I came in. Uh, the, the door was locked. I couldn't get in. You could, yeah. No, no, I'm joking. No, you're locked. Yeah. <laughs> we actually said, put a sign up, said no Jonathan allowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. We've no. moved on. Yeah, that's yeah, moved yeah. on. <laughs> now, and if you're not watching this on YouTube, Jonathan has facial hair now beyond just his normal level of scruff. Come on. Look at that, man. Oh, he's, he's got that yeah. rustic look. Yeah. He's a troubled... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Romantic theologian. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. It never grows in on the sides, guys. No, What's no, happened? I noticed that. I noticed yeah, that. It, it never it, does. It never does. This yeah, is disappointing. Right. Yeah. I think as I get older, I think, man, it's going to fill in this year, but it never does. <laughs> you know what you need? <laughs> it just gets grayer. What, what you need is beard oil. Beard oil. Supposedly, okay. that helps fill it out. Okay. Oh, does it? I guess it's I because stuff just sticks to I've the side of your face. I've never had any problem with growing facial hair. Really? Yeah, no, yeah you got a full beard, Graham? Yeah, no, yeah? It's, I have to chop it every couple of weeks because it just right? gets too much. That's know? right. Do you know what I've noticed? What? I looked in the mirror yesterday, and because you don't really look at the side of your head very often. <laughs> My hair's graying quite quickly in the side <laughs> of my head. Oh, good. You've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> oh, coming on. Oh, yeah. An aging millennial. You know, oh, isn't it? yeah, beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Welcome. <laughs> welcome to the air. Yeah, as a Gen X or a baby boomer, he's welcome right. to the, you know, upper echelons <laughs> yeah. of, of yeah. adulthood. Yeah, yeah. So do people just take... Do now people... we can start having real conversations. <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. Well, now you'll take me more seriously because I look like I'm wise. That's right. right? That's right. Um, so good. Yeah, so we're talking about metaphors, and the reason why we're going to talk about this, and I'm not going to name any names, but we, we came across a metaphor describing who we are as people, and we saw that it's potentially problematic, and that spurred Grandma to be like, oh, we should talk about metaphors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And some of the metaphors we use and how impactful they actually are, whether we know it or not. Because what I said in the introduction, and that's not my thinking entirely, you guys sent quotes, and I kind of crafted mm -hmm. something together from the quotes you sent through. Um, metaphors are life. Like, it, like we can't actually perceive reality outside of metaphor for some reason. Like, there, there's obviously the the world that we're seeing through our eyes, but when we actually ascribe meaning and significance to things, we have we can only ever do that justice through metaphors. I find. Yeah. And because there's there's a sense in which, in which when we describe something, to be literal is actually to be not meaningful to be meaningless in a sense right, yeah. but to actually use yeah. figurative language it actually elevates the thing itself into a realm of not only possibility but into um I, yeah i guess possibility beyond possibility yeah. so an example would be Actua into actuality into actuality yeah. exactly mm. so like for example instead of saying in a scientific way life has a beginning where you are a living organism you breathe and your heart beats multiple times throughout your existence, mm -hmm. and then it ceases and you die. Right. That's really boring to say. Uh -huh. But instead, how do we describe life? Yep. Life is a journey. Yep. Exactly. Life is 
Um, it's a piece of music. It's a piece. It's mm-hmm. like music. Life is like jazz. You know, yeah. we use we all rhythm. these. We use yeah, all right. these yeah. metaphors, yeah. Mm-hmm. and because we use that metaphor, it actually elevates the meaning and significance of the thing itself, and just des- and describes it in a way that that you couldn't have done otherwise. Yeah. So let's just talk about some metaphors here, mm-hmm. and more specifically, metaphors around who we actually are. So from a, an anthropological perspective, um, because we frame ourselves in sometimes limiting ways by the metaphors that we use. And sometimes when I said with, who's the guy, George? Lakoff. Lakoff. He said, uh, I'll read the quote again because it was just so good. that I th- Both you sent that one through, Jonathan. Yeah. New metaphors are capable of creating new understandings and therefore new realities. Mm-hmm. New realities emerge from metaphors. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So... How about we? Can we just actually get to a, like a really basic understanding here? I'm going to interview a little bit because you guys know a bit more than I do about this. What's a metaphor? <laughs> That's a good one. What's a metaphor? Um, the way I'd describe it. Well, I think there's 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 a couple of levels to metaphor. There's kind of the literal metaphor. We dis- well, basically, a metaphor is where you describe one thing by using yeah, that's by right. using yeah. uh, by describing it by by comparing it to something else. So you have kind of like the you can you have. You have the light metaphors, I guess you could say, which are similes, mm. where you say um, life is like a river. Mm. So that's a that's a comparison. What's life like? It's like a river. It kind of works mm. like a river, mm. and that's a, so that's a simile. What they call a simile, but metaphors are f- uh, a, a, a broader than that. And you take away the like, and you say life is a river. It's a, it's an actual description of one thing against by using a different thing yeah so you're going from similarity yeah like to actuality yeah life life is a river yeah and that describes all the kind of characteristics of life how it moves and and all that kind of stuff and and it gives you uh, a framework to live out of so instead of standing back from it life is like a river i'm standing somehow back from that but life is a river it has given me a whole framework for me to understand what life is like. Mm-hmm. That's a metaphor. That's the deep work of a metaphor. Yeah. So, I mean, Shakespeare, love, what's love? Love is like a red, red rose, you know. My love is like a, what, a flower or something like that. But love is a flower. Mm. My love for you is a, re- a rose, you know. It's it's that deep work. Yeah. That's how I describe a metaphor. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, though... Interesting enough that we can think, oh, you know, okay, that's metaphors out here. But actually, metaphors actually are so deeply ingrained in the way mm-hmm. that we speak in terms of the verbs that we use. Yep. So I might say, oh, you know, really sold this idea to somebody. I've actually applied an a economic metaphor it, to that. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So it's 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 seeded into our language mm-hmm. in ways that we're not seeing it. And I think that's where it gets really interesting because those verbs we use are actually drawing on a particular subtly at an implicit level they're drawing on a particular view of the world in which we live. That's right. And yeah. So it's shaping. Yeah, and then yes, exactly right. So jumping out from that, I'd say um all the everything f- around us is is asking for interpretation, and metaphorical language is how we interpret the world around us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and often we're sunken into a culture that we just pick up the the language that's been spoken mm-hmm. without thinking about what we actually what the the verbs that we're using in terms of the metaphors that's we're right. using. So we just and that's where this conversation yeah. is really interesting because we actually reinforcing a particular way of seeing the world or may have seen an organization or a ministry or a church um, and that's where it gets very interesting yeah metaphors become so strong that they become like I was saying the framework or they become the lens which we view everything through yeah and, th- and therefore they become the very grain of how we live we no longer see the metaphor itself mm. so let's, let's so they shape they shape they shape us so let's take that then let's take actually Let's go negative and then and hopefully yeah. on a positive note, okay? Mm. Uh, more, let's start critical and then actually build something mm. from there. Yeah. Um, the most, as I alluded in the introduction, the most popular metaphors that we use in the modern West are around industrial financial structures. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Um, and inve- uh, even, yeah. yeah, I'll say those yeah. two uh, descriptors, where we we view time. Uh huh through financial yes. yeah, uh, investments. Yeah. I, I don't want to invest my time yep. in this. Mm-hmm. That's already a metaphor. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, I feel like I'm not profiting from this. 
I uh, productivity. Yep. Um, systems. Yep. Strategy. All of these different types of ways of framing economics and and uh, finances are help us understand metaphor. But what that actually does to us is sometimes missed. Yeah. Because when we view our time as an investment and as a commodity, then that changes mm. what time actually is. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and it does. that yeah. changes actually who we are in relationship to time. Yep. Mm. So in a way, we are actually redefining the very essence of reality itself by the metaphors that we use. Mm. That's right. So yep. what has been your experiences with these types of metaphors? And do you find yourself catching yourself using them? Or are you, do you not have any problems with them? Are you? Do you think it's it's all kind of... Yeah, well, you don't over, have any problem. You don't well, have don't any problem with them until someone points it out. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I was, in a, like, I, was oh, yeah. A, I was at a breakfast this morning, and and so I made a comment about. Um, I won't go into the in deep into the narrative, other than I used a metaphor to say, oh, you know, in terms of church change, then um, you know, isn't there a sense in where it's open ended and there's not a goal at the end? So you, theologically, you're kind of the guardian. And the guy says to me, oh, no, I wouldn't really say that. And then I thought, actually. I think there's a better metaphor for that. I said, so you're, right. you'd be the, more the curator. He said, yeah, it's better. Right. So you see how powerful that is? Yeah, That, right. you know, like I just rolled into yeah. thinking, oh, yeah, well, you kind of, you know. But 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 there's a different there's a different picture forming with that. So I think that's an example of that. No, that's a really good example. Yeah. He, one of the ones that really gets me is, all, is um, the HR department. Yeah. In any kind of business. Yeah, yeah. What we yeah. talk about, which oh, yeah, yeah. stands for human resources. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that kills me. That's oh, the that's worst right. metaphor ever, that humans mm-hmm. are a resource. It's, it's probably yeah. one of the yeah. worst metaphors ever. One. It's horrible. And it's one that we adapt but so we just, But easily. we don't even think about it. No, we don't think about it. Yeah. But, uh, but it allows you to then... It allows you to then think of humans as resources yeah. for your business. Oh, yeah, this person's not working out. Terrible resource. Let's get rid of them and hire someone else. But that, but that goes down to a deeper thing of you know what I think dominates in terms of organisational structure. Yeah, is actually the industrial metaphor. Exactly, which is the you know the, the enlightenment, the sort of you know production line, and yes. and so then people within an organisation get treated as components or cogs in a machine. That's right. So it's really I I think it's I think I mean I have quite mm-hmm. quite a real passion yep. about saying well how do you see an organisation. How are you seeing that organisation? Because actually, the language you're using is just reinforcing, or 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 the it's it is creating an action as well. It is, yeah. Because the way right. you're seeing other people within the system. Yep. That's I remember right. mm-hmm. the. I don't know why I started having my eyes open to different metaphors that we just implicitly use, but especially mm. within church culture in particular, around oh, aren't they a great asset? Yeah. They're, man, oh, oh, yeah. They, they're yeah, yeah, they're yeah, such they're a great asset. Yeah. Or as, when you said human resources, that's what got me. And I'm yeah. like, how do I, I? I remember that was being used a lot in a meeting once. Mm-hmm. And I, I realized I'm going to try to not describe somebody by the value they bring to the team as the essence of who they are mm-hmm. in relationship to the team. Wow. And it's really difficult. Yeah, it's yeah. very difficult. It's so yep. tough to pry yourself away from viewing yep. someone as an asset or a piece of the puzzle. Yep. You know, all metaphors, yep. um, a cog in the machine. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's be- because, yeah. It, yeah, and that's right, because the metaphors then give us language about how to talk about the world and about our experience of the world. But when those, when that language becomes the only language we have resource to, <laughs> we are able to think about, then we can't even think outside of those yeah, metaphors anymore. It locks mm. us in. We are... That is how the world mm. appears to us because that's the only way we can language it. Yeah, and this is where I'd like to say this is where the poets. Come oh, in. because the poets are constantly the ones that are always trying to give new metaphors for life. Uh, they realize yeah. that 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 life, the experience of life, spills out of the language that we have. Therefore, they put language together in different ways and allow us to see the world through different lenses. So that, one way you're saying is that po- poetry breaks, well, breaks the language apart, but actually breaks the dominant, breaks dominant metaphors. It does. It, mm, it nice. breaks, it breaks nice them open. It breaks them open and allows new life to come through, new ways of seeing the world. So anyway, that's an aside, but uh, let's... It's yeah. a good aside. I want yeah. to come back to that when we talk mm, about the yeah. Bible a little bit. Yeah. Because mm. hey, the prophets... Oh, yeah, good point. The prophets are poets. Here's another one. Um, the mind is a machine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, body is a, the body itself is a machine. 
And that um, metaphor is particularly powerful because you have, in a real world application, you have Elon Musk with Neuralink trying to actually, yeah, he, he metaphorically point. views the brain as code on a computer. Yes. Oh. That's a good one. That's another good and, one. Yeah. And yeah. because of that, he thinks because of how powerful that metaphor is and how much that fits into yeah. his worldview of materialism yeah. that he can actually manipulate the brain yep. like he does a yep. computer. Yep. He can program the brain like a computer. Yes. And I hope he's wrong. Yeah. I hope he's wrong. But I you think, can see I where that goes, though, don't you? <laughs> you know, that starts to create a whole sort of way of and, and directory towards yes. orientation to where you go. I, I mean, yep. just aside, you know, one of the things that we did in the internship program, which you now oversee, yeah. is um, in the in the uh, level seven paper, what they had to do was, in terms of charting their um, ministry, was what we had been doing years before was, you know, learning learning objectives and you have a, have these ones around be no do. We created another one mm-hmm. which was I when I thought about this was actually we'd pushed everything to the right to the left side of the brain. Mm-hmm. We needed something to open the mind up. And so we what we asked them is, can you give us as one of your um as a fourth element in that, we want you to describe or give us a metaphor of how you're seeing your ministry. Right. Because what the metaphor does, it opens up the space of creativity, it's sort of like so. It, one, it's sort of saying, well, how I have actually seen my ministry, but it but it opens that. It, it's a creative space. Yeah, it it opens up that field of play to the imagination. Yeah, which I think is really interesting. Yeah, and you become a creator at that point. Yeah, you yeah, instead, and I think you're playing to the right doer. the right side of the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, it's absolutely open, open. Yeah, that's right. Um, so you, I got one. I mean, I can remember this one. Is this particular person was doing twenty four seven, twenty four seven youth work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she came up. So right. what her metaphor was? She's a cheerleader. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So ah, oh, so the metaphor now opens up. Oh, so what does a cheerleader do? So you you almost sort of yep. It, it's it's creating a much bigger space to mm. re rethink that and yep. rethink how you know how she might be playing out her ministry in that space. That's so interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It, it's so funny when you think of the, uh, coming back to thinking about um, institutional thinking about it as mm. a um, kind of like a machine. Mm. Machines pe- need people to run it. So you hire more. Um, ac- you hire more. Um, um, bureaucracy becomes a, a much bigger thing. Or you you need to hire. Um, you know, um, administrators because machines need administrators. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. you don't hire is you don't hire people that are actually working on the ground with the people that you're trying to uh, yeah. teach. So, yeah. so the metaphors again are shaping absolutely the way, yeah. even even down the the metaphors shape even down to the way that you structure yeah. your business. They change even everything. D- yeah, they change absolutely everything. Well, uh, well, for church in particular, the mechanism or the machine metaphor that's implicit within the metaphors we use are we are finally realizing are very problematic. Right, because they actually dehumanize people and yeah. yes. they wrongly see people primarily as assets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as well, if they're not contributing properly, they need to go. Yeah. And where that actually pushes up against church theology, because the people who are the problem, in a sense, are the people we want. Yeah. Because Jesus goes after the one sheep that's running away and, and not productive and not True. with the herd and not, not a part of the vision, vision, vision mission yeah. and strategic plan of the church. He goes after that one sheep. Yeah. You know, so it's completely counter it's true. Uh, to a biblical worldview. I mean, you go two ways with that. I, I mean, I thought in the sense of then the appealing to some of the beautiful metaphors we have in Scripture, um, but also you go the other way and thinking about some of the really destructive metaphors. or not They're not intended to be destructive, but those images that we use maybe of a leader. And the CEO one is right. like that. I'm not saying that's a yeah. necessarily destructive, but yeah. it does you know, create them the corporate culture sort of mindset and everything yep. begins to fold out of that. And, mm. and so maybe is there a challenge to think about some of the biblical metaphors more yeah. more deeply mm-hmm. yeah. when we're thinking about pastoral leadership and ministry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, it's a rediscovering yeah. because I know within my North American context, I don't know if it's the case now, I would be su- su- surprised if it isn't. Uh, a lot of larger churches, you know, of a few thousand people or more, uh, they would pride themselves in oh, our our executive pastor yes. was actually yes, the CEO yes, yes. of this that company. That was huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're going, it's yeah. like, oh, they were actually the CEO of a subsidiary company that Pixar bought. 
And yeah, it's just yeah. like, wow, that's amazing. We're bringing business into the church yeah, yeah. and structures and systems. Yeah. And on one level, yeah. I'm like, yeah, on one yeah. level, I'm like, that's Isn't great. That? Oh, on one level, I'm like, that's great because they're bringing a uh, they're bringing a perspective that you didn't have before that could actually help you in some ways. Yes, but yes. in other ways, that the the reason why you value that so highly is because of the metaphors that you have at play deep down, mm. where you view the church as more of an organization rather than, if you will, a parish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are two metaphors. Yeah, uh, you you view it more as an organization rather than uh, this will ruffle some feathers, the body of Christ. Yeah. Metaphor. Yeah. You know, these metaphors are powerful. Yeah. And they inform how we do what we do. So when I, I know some churches that are large and highly organized institutions, another metaphor, yeah. um, they look down upon small churches that for some reason just can't get to that next, past that barrier of yeah. attendance or just can't get, get to where they need to go. And, oh, it's, it's because they're not doing what we're doing. But uh, that's what I initially thought. But then I'm realizing... No, it's because they're actually, maybe, well, maybe they are trying to aspire to your level of success, and they're bad at it. Fair yeah. enough, that could, that could be the case. But there are some churches and some movements and some denominations, majority Catholic, uh, for some reason, mm. they're using different metaphors to describe what they're actually doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because mm-hmm. of that, they're not even playing the same game that you're playing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Another metaphor. You know, yeah, yeah, we cannot metaphor. help but communicate, <laughs> side note, Yeah, we cannot communicate apart from metaphor. Yeah. Well, well, that's the get gets this line. Well, this is is, I mean, a few exactly. years ago I was doing this stuff really because good. in the, the McLuhan sort of framework yeah. is about metaphors. Yeah, right. Um, but it, all language is metaphor. Yeah. I think yeah. It's, I think you could hold to that. No, I think that's right. All me- language is. The funny thing about the metaphor, they offer, uh, there's a there's a an echo chamber within inside of the metaphor because it, often deep down inside, metaphors sneak in the things that we mm. truly care about. Mm. Okay. So that's why... So when we look at the world, the whole world is looking for interpretation. So the, the church itself is also looking for us to interpret what it is. And, we, and when we interpret it through the lens of business, we sneak in what we truly want the church to be, mm. which is profitable in a business. So it's no doubt that we come to and start to describe the church and what we are doing in it through business lens if that's what we truly seeking so it sneaks it in but then then it starts to echo back on us because then we can't think of the church as anything else yeah so we reinforce what metaphors often do is show us what we truly are seeking Mm -hmm. and then reinforce reinforce it to us so that we we come to forget about it because now we're we're talking how exactly how we want to talk about things. So deep down inside, if you think about the Western world where it has snuck in business and it's stuck in financial kind of gain, it's no doubt that because that's what we truly seek. And, which, which and raises, so how do we you, how do we change that? Well, you know, it's, not to take this conversation in that direction, but yeah. it really strikes me just how important the imagination is. Yeah. Which. Yep. Not to overcomplicate this situation, but I do yeah. find it quite a helpful category to think about social imaginary right. and cultural imaginary. Mm-hmm. This notion, it's a, it's 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 complicated because it's it's a, it's this echo chamber, right? And the echo chamber isn't just individual. The echo chamber is is communal. Yeah. So, yep. yes, the social imaginary is or cultural imaginary can be a culture. But I wonder sometimes wonder even within a church, but there's a lot of it's very porous. Yeah. And, and so there's a, a kind of imaginary sort of social imaginary that's going on that we're pulling out of that all the time. Yes. So the question is what what what? what so Chamber, somebody like Charles Taylor would say that the, the social imaginary is dominated by economic um, metaphors. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, but I think it's quite helpful to think about that sort of notion of the imagination because that's what we're talking about here. We are how we imagine our world. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And then and then the metaphor is how we language it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think that's right. Yeah, there. I think yeah, so much to go, so much, so rich, eh? It's, it's so <laughs> rich, and I don't even know. I know where I want to go, but I don't. Oh, you go, you go where you want to go. Yeah, I don't you know go where you want to go. I want to go there too early yeah. because mm-hmm. I don't want to exhaust it. Okay. But I don't think we will. Um, oh, can I say one thing? Then? Yeah, you say one thing, oh, man. I, just thinking about this, I wonder if the way you know, if you're in a church, and you th- and you want to, you want to, kind of take a, a test of the life of that church or where you think you're mm. heading is is to say. What are the metaphors that we're, yeah, we're yeah, using? Yeah, that's that, nice. That, that yeah. could just be a good start. Yeah. How are people talking from the front? Just yeah. listen. You could go on a few Sundays and listen to the language. 
you know, you don't have to critique it at this stage. Just listen to it. That's How am great. I talking about the church? Mm. Think about your own metaphors. And I think if you can start to shift those metaphors, then you will actually be doing something very significant in your church. I'll tell you, can I mm. go off of that? Yeah. Yep. So a lot of churches, they have, um, it's quite popular to have a, a, a vision statement, a mission statement, values, a list of things yep. that we value. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a part of our strategic plan. Um, for some reason, your mic's just kind of doing funny stuff. Oh, you're, you're good now. Um but basically, I've never heard ever what you just proposed because yeah. what you actually just proposed and what Graham is, is mm. has proposed as well is actually yeah. to instead of letting the the values of the organi- of the church I see the values of the church um, guide you. Yeah, that's secondary because the values emerge from the metaphors. Yeah, they do. The that's values point, emerge man. from the metaphors, and so that's a good point. Next yeah. time your church is, if you're in a part of this, the broader servant leaders or board or elders, and you're actually going through that process of reassessing everything, you should do exactly what you just said. Mm. What is the? What are the aspirational metaphors that we want to to see ourselves as? Yeah, because we were like, well, what are the aspirational visions or mission? Or values. Yeah. We're not there yet, but we want to create a culture yeah. that, that promotes these things and sees these as natural. That's actually secondary to yeah. the metaphor itself. I agree. Do you know what's so funny, though? Hearing you say that, so this is this is the levels of it. Aspirational itself is a metaphor. Yeah. Mm. So already already that, that metaphor is shaping the way that you even might approach thinking about metaphors mm. because or the church because you're thinking, okay, we are aspirational. But once if, if you change the metaphor completely for a minute and you thought about the church as a garden. Yeah, I was yeah, about yeah. to leave there. I mean, yeah. Because so, suddenly, yeah. suddenly aspirational doesn't become so important. Cultivation. Cultivation becomes yeah. important. Exactly. Now, we just changed one word. One word. And everything about the church at that point changes. Because before I was climbing a mountain. About it. Before I was climbing exactly. a mountain. Exactly. And now I'm cult. I'm I'm tending to the ground. Exactly. Man, those, that is beautiful. Those are two so, different so metaphors. Wow. And so I was whole, trying to. I was communicating wow. the same thing. I and no, I was communicating two different things, but they're connected. But two different things brought us in two different directions, even though they're ro- connected at the That's root of right. what I what my heart wanted. That's right. Yeah. Exactly right. Like yeah. a like a compass. It just changed the degree slightly and would lead us in a completely different it, direction. It would, and, and it shifts this, the way in which I might make it exactly changes. Exactly right. The because way that you a, see the people. Yeah, because the way if I'm thinking about a garden, the people. I, mean, I quite like the garden yeah, metaphor. Yeah. I become an environmentalist rather than a kind of mechanic. Exactly so, right. So I, I, I can't. So the metaphor plays here. Yeah. If it's a garden, I don't make the stuff grow. Right. I can't make the plants grow, mm-hmm. but I can till the soil. Yep. I can f- feed the soil. So if you think about that in pastoral ministry, that's huge. Because you go, well, you know, I'm, I can't make the plants grow. Yeah. So I can, but I can, you know, I can create the environment where people, where, where plants flourish. Yes. Or where people flourish. Yes. Yep. So, yep. That's so key. Okay, we're going to, this is, that's so key. I don't think you understand how key that actually is. I'm back at Joey. Because (laughs) I hope you, I think you do. I'm just trying to be a a hyperbolic. Um, That's good. But I I think the the garden metaphor is so important. And we're going to segue now to biblical metaphors because that's a good segue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's so important because if you don't make the thing grow, if you don't make the the Mm. fruit bear its fruit in season, yeah, you can can do things that help it (laughs) in its normal processes. Then it's actually God who does that. Yeah. So yeah. instead of, for example, aspiring metaphors that that uh, we yeah. can aspire towards, yeah, that's actually the wrong metaphor to use yeah. in a biblical worldview. It is because it's actually the, the, what you deeply want is what is God doing, and what garden is God growing, and yeah. how do I cultivate that? Because I don't, I don't create the fruit. I don't bear the fruit. Well, I do. Anyway, we're mixing metaphors here. Um, but and, and then how do you come to understand a garden? Oh, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it brings in a whole thing. Well, because, yeah, there's because the whole it, theological thing about the, even what to think about the garden, what goes on in the garden, exactly. and, and the naming that goes on in the garden. That's a whole lot of other stuff sitting there. That's right. So here's the question then. Let's and, get then to, and then what are, what are you truly? Are you a gardener? Yeah. <laughs> and what does a, how does a gardener act? Mm. 
No, you know, they get so, amongst the soil. <laughs> Sorry. They get yeah, their no, hands I love dirty. That. So, yeah, get yeah. amongst the soil. So yeah. the more we're talking about metaphors in this garden metaphor, obviously the most obvious garden metaphor is Genesis chapter two. Yeah. And I'm always like, why is it a garden? Yeah. Why Why is that the image that that the scriptures are, are drawing on for us to understand who God is and our place with God and our place in the world? Um, if, if you're a literalist when it comes to scripture, you're like, well, because that's exactly what happened. Yeah. If you're a literalist slash figurativist, if that's a word, um, you're like, okay, what what picture is being painted here in mm-hmm. Scripture? And I think it is actually what we just articulated. If I had to look deep down into it, yeah, because because God in the in the garden when it ascribes who we actually are, yeah, obviously we're created in God's image. Another metaphor. Well, who's God? We need to understand that and under, understand ourselves. But when it comes to what we are to do, it's actually to work the ground, right? And as if we get deeper into that metaphor, work the ground as priests work in the temple, right? Those are the same. It's the mm. same verb, mm. right? We're we're actually priests in a mm. garden, and then so the whole you have to unpack that and unpack that further, and you have to understand the whole biblical story to really understand that whole garden mm-hmm. metaphor itself. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, but I find it fascinating that it's a garden that's the metaphor, right? And would it be wrong to say because that's the primary metaphor? I would argue that's probably the primary metaphor in Scripture yeah. of a garden. Jesus goes back to it quite often. Well, yeah, well, of course, um, the critical moment of Jesus' own, um, the, the passion is in a garden. It's in a garden. He yeah. refers to uh, yeah. us uh, as he's the vine and we're the branches. Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. tons of uh, fig tree metaphor, you know, yeah. trees, natural metaphors. Yeah, anyway. yeah Sermon on the Mount is even that. You've got, you know, yeah. the, the whole thing about the chapter six, security, you know, birds of the air. Look at the bird. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. Look at the birds of the air, the, the mm-hmm. leaves of the field. Mm-hmm. So it's it's pulling on this on the creative, yeah. you know, images. Yeah. yeah. It's trawling us back to Genesis. Yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. And I mean, just thinking, picking up on that and the, how the metaphors go through, I mean, Psalms picks up on like we're trees yeah. planted by, by, yeah. beside streams of water. Yeah. And then Jesus, when he comes back and they mistake him for the gardener. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's all these garden all metaphors. Important. And yeah. I, and I think the question then is why these metaphors and not other ones. And yeah. you could say that's just because of the world that they were functioning in and, yeah. You know, there weren't buildings like this mm-hmm. around. So they probably, you know, we could say they would have used different metaphors at that stage. Yeah. Uh, that If they were writing those words now today, it's possible that's true. But I think that what those metaphors open up for us and re- bring us back to is that they're deeply human. Yeah. They're more human than the mechanistic uh, mm-hmm. metaphors that mm-hmm. we tend to function out of today. Mm-hmm. That's That's where I would start to want to push into those. There's another those metaphors because they're they're not our metaphors. Yeah, they're actually an, not ours because we don't function out of them. There's another piece to the metaphoric thing that goes on too. We yeah. talked about okay, so you know, so scripture is a huge de- depository, yeah, repository, yeah, of of images and that we mm. can draw from. Yeah, but what's interesting too is that the, the relationship between our actually lived life, the sp- the sphere of our making, or yeah. all the poet, you know, the po- yeah. poesis, yeah. The, that there's a play and a relationship to that. So, for example, something that I've thought about is the way in which we interact at a communicative level uh, or communication level that we're doing things we're not even realizing oh, yeah. that are actually shaping the metaphors or the imagination. Yeah, too. yeah. So, um, you know, so the society we live in, you, so we get on a train to go to work, we get on a car to drive. Mm-hmm. So that all sort of plays into the imaginative space. So Absolutely. it's not unrelated to, we're not thinking pies in the sky and the mind's a separate part. Actually, it's deeply integrated to actually our our bodily our bodily playing out in a certain way. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. It's yep. chicken and egg real bit, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah. They reinforce, this is the echo chamber of how they yep, reinforce yep, yep. each other. Yeah. Yeah. I would be I would be more inclined to argue only after this conversation because I yeah. wouldn't have had this thought before we started talking. Yeah. I'd be more inclined to argue that the metaphors that are used in the Bible around those core metaphors yeah. 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 would still happen if this was the context okay. of the Bible. Yeah, okay. Only because of the problems that arise from using other metaphors and deviating potentially. Yeah, yeah, Say yeah, it again, yeah, Joe, yeah. you just need to catch yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That the metaphors of, say, garden yeah. and the very natural metaphors yeah. are are the more humanizing metaphors on purpose. Mm. Um, where if, for example, if Jesus was in New York City, 
would he say uh you know would he say that uh you're the you're the you're the steel beams and i'm the foundation yeah 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 it it communicates kind of the same sense yeah um but it also you know it it, it's a bit it's a bit coarse yeah yeah i know i know what you mean you know yeah yeah. where it's like vine and branches is like it's living yep where these things can crumble and fall yeah, ex- yeah, that's right. Well, you could say a, a garden yeah, could burn. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it is burst again. Yeah, you know. So anyway, I I think yeah, I'm re- I'm fine. I'm actually realizing now how important <laughs> metaphor metaphors. Yeah, well, actually like some are. some yeah. things. It's, I mean, I've thought about this, but it's some yeah, things exactly are dropping right. for me. Just thinking about, it, particularly when you talked about you know church and analyzing yeah. metaphors, like that's <clears> very helpful. But just how we get trapped into even this. Like, oh, we need to be relevant. We need to be contemporary. Yeah. Um, which may go back to our conversation even last time with Claire about even how we contemporize or relativize biblical biblical yep. language mm-hmm. into contemporary metaphors. Yeah, There's man. a danger there yeah, it's, that it's we've actually lost point. something in translation. We have, That's a good point. and that, and this is something I thought about with that a lot with church. You know, particularly yeah. when I was dealing with students about we talk about. I said, look, the language of success and failure is not helpful to us because it's not the language of scripture. The language of scripture is much more about stewardship and faithful or faithfulness and fruitfulness. So if we get trapped mm. by using those mm. terms, we'll be caught in that vortex of, of all those anxieties that come with that. So this raises the question about Man. the church and its use of language. Yeah, we're, we're kind of a bit absolutely. I think we're careless for language, to be honest. Definitely. You know. Yeah. It's unthought through. Yeah. It's just un it's unseen. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just unreflected upon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I would like to say, jumping in on what you were just saying, is that I wonder when the study of the Bible, the reading yeah. of the Bible, yeah. is not about simply it's not simply about and maybe it's not even the main thing, is to to to, to understand the where the you know the background of the biblical mm. language came from and all that kind of stuff and have so much knowledge mm-hmm. about the bible it's to be shaped again by the metaphors yes. of the bible yeah yeah and that's a very deep unconscious kind of thing so yes yeah, spend time in the bible but you're by spending time in the bible you're actually being reshaped by the metaphors that gives you language then to see the world in a completely different way that is what the the biblical the biblical world is really well, doing for you yeah and that's why it's always so contentious with our world because the metaphors clash. The mm. metaphors mm. Are, are are in are in battle with each other. They are. They're yep. in battle. Yeah, they are. And they are. So this is this is maybe that's the that's the play that's the field that we need to be playing on, re- helping people to to give people new metaphors to uh, to then interpret the world that they're living in. Yes. Because we're so caught up in the metaphors, we can't even see the world in a different kind of way. Mm, yeah. Unless we change people's metaphors, yeah, us, I don't yeah. know. That's that's a huge. Yeah, it's a huge thing. No, maybe exactly that's the right. role. Of, maybe that's the role of the church. And now you, I'm having thoughts around like evangelism and metaphors because you might be explaining, you might be explaining biblical truths, but if they're more prose than metaphors, yeah. then you might be someone might be interpreting or picking up what you're not necessarily putting down. Definitely, you know. Where yeah, I don't, I can't give an example right now, but if if two people are functioning under different metaphors for life itself yeah. and reality itself, yeah, and you're not using metaphors to explain the reality that you're kind of presenting, yeah, then you probably are miscommunicating. Yeah, that's a good point. It reminds me that's of a, a conversation point, I had a number of years ago with this guy who came to church, who started well, he wasn't coming to Sunday church, but he came to our community thing on. Thursday, mm-hmm. and he was a radio announcer, and and he said, and he got more kind of interested in Christianity, yep. and he said to me, oh, you know, a number of things, and I said to him, well, maybe, and, and I used a metaphor, which is not an uncommon one when we talk about. It. I said, oh, well, I guess it depends how you see the, the Christian story, or Christ in the story. Yeah, is he is he a farmer that's got a lot of fences, and you're either on one side of the fence or the other, mm-hmm. or is he much more about the well and the living water? Yeah. And I said, you know, maybe you, if you were in that picture, I kind of like the idea of Jesus as a living well because maybe you're not that far away. Yeah. It, so yeah, it, it's changes, great, yeah. It, it changes. It changes everything. It changes everything. So yeah. he wasn't sort of thinking, oh, what, 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 what fences do I have to climb over to get there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not sure I want to. Yeah. Um, Good point. But, but actually, yeah, there's a different way of seeing this. I actually thought it was quite a helpful metaphor for church people too because. 
generally when there's a fence, we most of us want to go to the edge of the fence. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, we, yeah, we yeah. do. We want to yeah, see how exactly. far we can go. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's the borders right. yeah, that I'm still yeah. in, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but, but if you change that, say, what? So there aren't so much fences, but there's a well. That's and right. That's, that really comes the question yeah. that comes out. Am I, am I moving towards the well yeah, that's or am right. I moving away? Yeah, it's a great metaphor. It's, yeah. it's so rich. But yeah, that, but then that's the use of metaphor. Yeah. Absolutely. One of the other metaphors I'm just thinking now is the Lord's Prayer. Where Jesus gives us the metaphor of Father, oh yeah, He says our Father. Yeah. Okay. Now that now just by giving us that metaphor that God is like a Father, God is a Father. God not is, like yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah God is yeah. a Father. Abba, Abba, the most kind of intimate kind of word mm. that you can use for Father. Mm. It, he reshapes our understanding of how close God is to us. That's how powerful metaphors are, and it makes me think of um um. In Proverbs, there's a, there's a little proverb in Proverbs yeah. where it says the tongue, the tongue brings life or death. So the metaphors we use yeah. that we are constantly yeah. living out of mm. can bring people life or they can bring people death. Most people, but yeah. it's our tongue. It's in our capacity to shape the world. Yeah. Now, that's Proverbs. Yeah, wow. Well, that's powerful. Most man. people think of that passage as like slander and gossip or of yeah, negativity or positivity. Slander. Exactly. Yeah. No, you're you're no. right down to the foundation yeah. itself. No, we're, we're talking about how we, we interpret and language so, the world. Here you go. I mean, you've just knocked out a couple of metaphors. Yeah. Negative or positive. Where did that come from? Yeah. It's electricity. Yeah, it well, we, we, that's right. We it, turn it off or on. Yeah, turn that's right. On. Yeah, life so, doesn't you know, get turned off or on. And, and yeah. interesting in the language of positive negative. I'm saying it's wrong, it's point, but, yeah. but 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 we then get into it. This is our then thing. then we get move into the idea of binaries. I oh, totally. You know, exactly. it's binaries. It's either this or that. Yeah. And actually, the word is not this or that. No. You just, you Even just at know. its foundational uh, uh, foundations, it's not binary. No. no. As mo- quantum mechanics would t- show yeah. us and tell us. Yeah. There are no binaries. You, Joe's going to go around <laughs> and go, I can't say this and I can't say that. Cause, cause <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but, what we're not yeah. saying is that everything's relative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we're no, not we're saying not. that. No, we're not. No. We're not. No, of course not. Of course not. But, we're, but we are saying that we have a role in shaping the world around you us. You do. And mm. we need to be careful with the metaphors we we are using. What, what, just to be aware of let's, them. Let's talk about... Okay, are sorry. they life giving? Well, I was going to go with the biblical yep. thing again. Yeah, Did you I was going to go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because... Yeah. I mean, there's some... There's one of the really beautiful, one of the ones I love. You know how we talk about time as a resource. I'm wasting my time. Yeah, yeah I, I come out with that. I know. Yeah, Ecclesiastes three. There's a season yeah. for every time. A season. Now that's not talking about wasting time anymore. Yeah. It's talking about hey, this mm. time that may seem in our mm. worldview a waste. Mm. In in a biblical worldview, it's a season. Mm. What's happening in this season? What can be done with this season? Mm. There's no waste here. These are seasons. They're mm. seasonal changes in mm. our life. I'm just in a season of wastefulness. <laughs> yeah, but but ma- but even saying that, it just it changes your your yeah, understanding it of it. So yeah, I mean the biblical uh, metaphors are, are so much more. Well, the human. only the only reason why we say I'm wasting time is because we're not productive. It's usually in that context. Yeah, yeah it is. Of I'm and not capitalizing right. yeah. capital. Yeah, I'm not uh, capitalizing. Yeah. In you know the down payment or what yeah. I've yeah, been given, that's right. and I ought to make something of myself. Yeah. So if I'm not making something of myself, I'm wasting time, because the capital that I've been given is not being used properly. Yeah. Yeah. That's all a metaphor in the financial industry. Yeah, it's really subtle. It just over, yeah, yeah, it's so subtle. It, it is so subtle. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about some metaphors uh, within yeah. the New Testament here, as we kind of conclude for the last uh, ten minutes or so. Yeah, I mean, I think of stories as metaphors. So yeah, so yeah. that's how I you know, yes. and I think one that constantly extended reminds, metaphors. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this there's another there's another assumption under this that we're not talking about, which is another subject, which is how we actually see scripture. Oh, you know, you know a metaphor of interpretation. Well, yeah, like that's a great you know, point. do do that's how point. we're interpreting because if you're going to do it literally, then it just stays stays static. Yeah, good point. But but that's yeah. another story. Yeah. But, um, but one I constantly feel challenged about, and I think this is the one that sort of keep, he keeps me human, is the story of the woman caught in adultery, mm. because I just you know I, I remind myself of, of that story, of the ones throwing the stone, the, the ones that are picking up the stones, and Jesus sees and writes in the in the sand. I just find it. A really powerful story, just to remind me of my own right. humanity and and locating myself in terms of of um, I'm not better than somebody else. Yeah. 
you know, that, yeah. in, in, in Jesus' whole posture. I just, I haven't got any kind of proposition no, or any one else statement. It's just a, it's a story that, that is a metaphor that just keeps me grounded. Yeah, that's cool. I mm. like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Joy? Any any metaphors that jump out for you? Well, the the most obvious one would be Paul's metaphor of running a race. Of what? Right. Of Run, running a race. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a that's good a, point. Following yeah, Jesus yeah. like running He's a race. He's full of metaphors. He's full oh, of yeah. metaphors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. what's fascinating about that metaphor is he's not talking about in a race being won by one person. He's seeing a race being won by anybody who finishes. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. You know? Because yeah. in a race, you want to be the winner. That's yeah, so but in his true. in his understanding of a race, yeah, he's really he's, he's he just wants you to finish. Yeah, that's all he wants you to do. Gosh, he wants you to finish point. well. Yeah, it's awesome. He's he yeah. subverted the he subverted it. He slightly. subverted it. Yeah, he's taken a metaphor that's probably would have been very well known at the time by yeah. going to the games. Yeah, yeah. and then changed it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, that's a good point. And then, and he does that too with um the the armor, the armor, armor of God, so exactly. Yeah, uh, and all those oh, metaphors and, and images, you know, the the sword of the spirit, yeah. right? Yeah, it cuts through, man. It's just like God's yeah. gonna do what He's gonna do. Yeah, He's 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 sharp. Yes, He can pierce. Yep. Um, and then um, what? Well, I'll finish this. I'll go to you, Jonathan. Uh, the most obvious metaphor: Come and follow me. Oh yes, right. Yes, Following right. Jesus, yeah. yeah, as a metaphor for discipleship, yeah. yeah, and even discipleship is a metaphor. It's all metaphors, mm. um, but what we we have the image in our head. That's what that's why I love when I you study language and what is it, etymology? Is that the yep. study of yep. language? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you realize that everything is a or symbol. Linguistics, There's a or linguistics, studies, yeah. But, and yeah. and I'm a visual learner, and when I when I think things. I think it images, not words. Mm. Some people mm. think in words. I yeah, mostly true. think in images. Oh, yes. no, no, just, yeah, and and when I think of the word follow, and it's, I have to place it in a context. And if it's in the context of the New Testament, I actually like I'm li I can literally see myself like just following after Jesus. Yep. Um, but that's a that's probably the, probably the most dominant metaphor in the New, in at least the Gospels is yes. the following. Mm. Yeah. And what does it actually mean to follow? And what's the relationship to the person you're following? And and how do you follow? Yeah, you know, it, all these different things come about mm. because of that. Mm -hmm. What about you, Jonathan? What would be some metaphors? Unless I stole some. No, of No, no, you haven't. Look, the one that just jumps out for me, of course, is when Jesus says, "I'm the good shepherd." Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. to me, that's a deeply human, yeah. Hum, yeah. human kind of metaphor, and it just, I mean, to me, it's kind of, I, I, I can smell it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. It's that, kind know. of earthy, isn't it? It's earthy. I feel like I'm on a farm. Like yeah, when, when right. I when I hear that, yeah, and I know what it smells like. Yeah, yeah, and and it's, it's kind of ugly sometimes. It's interesting disgusting. what he, but but to me, I'm like, it's interesting to me the metaphors he doesn't use, and it, why why does he use that metaphor? He doesn't say, "I'm the rabbi." No, he doesn't. No, why they, doesn't he, they why say does, rabbi. Yeah, he doesn't say he rabbi. Say, why doesn't he say yeah. that? Yeah, uh, I mean, because he doesn't say, and he wouldn't have said, "I'm not the I'm not the CEO." You know, he doesn't say, I'm just saying, like, just think about the metaphors he doesn't say. And it just mm. brings the metaphor mm. he does say into sharp relief. Mm. I'm the good shepherd. Mm. What kind of God are we following? He's a good shepherd. And then he said, you know, be like me. Mm. Mm. So what, what kind of metaphors are we using to shape ourselves? And what metaphor should we be using to, to look at ourselves through? That, that to me is always... Mm. Um, that's that's life giving for me when mm. you start thinking mm. like that. I think, mm. yeah. So that's my one. Yeah. <laughs> Any more? No. Oh, there's lots, yeah, there's well, tons. There's, there's there's so many. There is tons of them, and yeah. when you start talking like that, yeah. Because, well, his rebukes of people. I'm thinking Revelation. Don't be lukewarm. Uh, yep. That's a you know. That's a good one. You're too. lukewarm. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It's like you can actually you can taste that one. You can yeah. taste that metaphor. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, you know what? I don't want lukewarm coffee. But yep. you know what's, yeah. what's also interesting? Yeah, you can and smell not to, it and taste it. Is it as a sort of jump from the biblical text? Is just how much of the biblical metaphors have seeped into popular culture? Mm -hmm. For yeah. example, yeah, the Good oh, Samaritan. Definitely. Oh, that was definitely. that's probably the most dominant oh, metaphor. Like, that's a good point. It goes back yeah. the other way. But yeah, 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 yeah. So that so these are all within. There are metaphors within popular culture that are drawn deeply from the Christian narrative. Yeah. Yep. Well, the David and Goliath one is. Yeah. yeah that, you know. 
David and Goliath, you know, yeah, big company, yeah, yeah. fights little little business, you know, David yeah. and Goliath, and you hear that. So, um, yeah, so that's that's an interesting, another interesting one to think about, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's How those metaphors point. are playing out in popular well, culture. What I thought was funny yeah. was I watched Survivor, the reality TV yeah. show, and they had a season called David versus Goliath. Right. Yeah. And so they had all these big, strong, burly people on one team and all these more intellectual, um, small in yeah. stature, but quite wise and, yeah. and mm-hmm. intelligent people on the other. And uh, the host, Jeff Probes, was getting the metaphor mixed up all the time. Oh, really? And because he was like, well, you thought you were a Goliath, and you thought you were David, <laughs> but it turns out David's become Goliath. And I'm just like, I'm like, okay, we're, we have now emerged beyond the biblical worldview and story of this metaphor That's to, awesome. yeah. to almost people wanting to be like Goliath. Right, And I'm yeah. like, where, where David's aspirational. Once oh, again. right, yes, yes. And Goliath is someone actually to be looked down upon. Good but in, in the metaphor point. he was using yeah. was, uh, well, Goliath is just strong, and David is weak, and the weak beat the strong. Yeah. Is, is that, so, it, yes, the metaphor is used, but mm. once you place it outside of the biblical context, it actually loses its proper meaning. Which is a really right. interesting point about right. the way in which we do. That's interesting. You know, is, again, we can't even take... What might be a um, a popular culture metaphor that isn't in the biblical narrative, and then actually find an an illusion and push it back the other way. Oh, that's a good point too. Which is another uh, another spin on that, isn't yeah. it? Reinterpret it through. There is a in you know. So I teach theological reflection as a dis- as a discipline and part of uh, one of the courses oh, right. that I do, and um, so there is. Diff- a whole variety of different models. Yep. But one of the model does this, and, and it's quite students quite like it, is that you you know you have your experience, and then you think of a metaphor that mm-hmm. describes that parents, mm-hmm. and then the next step you do is you look in scripture where is a metaphor that has some of that resonance, right? And then you go to that biblical metaphor, mm-hmm. and and the reason is because then you can you can push that metaphor out here and look at it, yeah. But you can see what he can say in there. You know, I've got this metaphor. This where's it? Here in scripture, yeah, and then re, re, re interpret, begin to interpret your experience again, yeah, using that um, metaphor. I think that's quite clear, yeah, that's pretty interesting, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, I've got questions right there, that's yeah. awesome. So, let's let's kind of land this, yeah. Um, uh, Grab let's some. get a bit more not practice, this, this is very practical, but yeah. I, even saying practical is a bit mm-hmm. demeaning of the conversation we just had. It's, it was a great conversation, yeah, I, I've learned heaps. Yeah, uh, there's probably four or five conversations we've had that have actually been like properly shaping of yeah. how I understand things, <laughs> and I can already tell this one is one of those. Um, so, for somebody listening, metaphors are foundational. Um, they actually they they paint they paint color. They not only they draw reality. They don't just paint the color in yep. the in the drawing. They are reality itself. Yeah, in a sense. Yep. So when it comes to our Christian living and our following of Jesus and discipleship, what what would your advice be around the use of metaphors? In, if you want to reiterate what you've already said, feel free. Mm. But what what would you really be like? Okay, well, how can I actually go from this conversation? And actually, apl- like do something with it beyond just being like that's a great intellectual conversation around our metaphors. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, I probably yeah re- reiterate what I said before. I'd say, look, even if you're even if you're now aware that you're speaking through metaphors, that is a good start. And just to say, just to say, wh- what kind of metaphors am I using? Um, how are they? How are they impacting me? Would be a good place to start. And then to say, is that what I truly seek? Is that what I really mm. believe? Mm. Just to just to say, is there a disconnect between the metaphors that I function inside of? And what I actually really want mm. and what I actually believe. And often there's a disconnect between those things. Mm. And then you can start to move on to changing those metaphors. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, there's lots of things you could say. I, I think because I said it before and yeah. I do say it, to, I, I think it's a good question. Is, so when you think about what you do, and if you are in pastoral ministry, then how do you see, what's that metaphor that describes one is, yeah, well, yeah, well, how, what metaphor would you use to describe your ministry? Mm. Yeah. Maybe it's what metaphor would you like to use yeah. to describe your ministry? Yeah. And and that may open up some spaces where you've not thought before. Yeah. yeah. And, and I guess one thing I'd also say just to, is to say, hey, you know what, what, why don't you take a risk and let the biblical metaphors <laughs> yeah, 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 rise absolutely. to the surface yeah. again? 
Yeah. What, you, what would yeah. happen if you st- really started yeah. using those again to yeah. describe your church and your life and the, the business that you're running and all that kind of stuff? Go back to the biblical metaphors. I think they are f- rich with life. Yeah, I think one thing I would I would add kind of to close is there's different areas of our life that need a, a, a metaphor. And you don't need to have necessarily one no. overarching metaphor no. for every aspect of your no. life. Yep. Um, for example, when you said pastors or people in the ministry, I'm like, that's great. But what about those who aren't? What, well, what yeah, metaphor yeah, should too. you use? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. one of my favorite biblical metaphors, I didn't realize this until, I didn't can't believe I didn't think of this until now, uh, ambassador. Oh, yeah. I'm an, an ambassador of Christ. Right, right. Mm. You know, mm, I yep. love that metaphor. And as I, as I go out beyond just like my little bubbles of mm-hmm. Christian living, mm-hmm. I, I, mm. I, I actually mm. live by that metaphor mm. of if people want to know what Canada is like, well, they can look at me. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. because mm. I'm in a sense mm. an ambassador yeah, of Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I speak a little bit different. I say, I do some funny things. I push up against culture. I fit in in different ways. Yep. So I think that's very much the same thing with... Mm. So I, I think there's different areas of your life that need to be metaphored. And, <laughs> and I, I think it's good to do yeah. that intentionally yeah. because it's already happening whether you know it or not right now. Definitely. You already have a metaphor that's guiding what you're doing mm. in every aspect of, mm. of your making. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, and I think I would kind of end with that. Cool. Sounds good. Good.